This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Carol. Carol talks for a living from morning till night. So she relies on Flo's crystal clear home phone service brought to her through Flo's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her in the know. And because she bundles her mobile broadband and TV services, she enjoys huge savings so she can enjoy much more for much less. So visit any Flo retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Friday, May the 20th, 2016, and this is your Barbados Today morning news update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. In our top story, what began as a march for justice by the opposition Barbados Labour Party ended with a call for the healing of the nation by opposition leader Mia Motley, suggesting that the country was sick. Hundreds of Barbados took to the streets yesterday afternoon in a so-called white march to protest against the Front Del Stewart administration's handling of the country's affairs. Addressing the protesters at the end of the march from Hero Square, the city, to a stone's throw away from the office of the Prime Minister on Upper Bay Street, Motley urged citizens to respond with their conscience to the manner in which the country was being managed, no matter who was in power. And we recognize that all great struggles have taken time. But what this government that sits today as we speak in Bay Street must know that we, the people, are watching. And every decision of this government from now on, every bill that is passed, every contract that is awarded, every project Commission, every salary increase that is given must be watched, monitored, and responded by the people of this country because the power of the people is stronger than the people in power. The caregiver at the center of a recent case of assault of an elderly woman returns to court on Monday after she was released on $3,000 bail yesterday afternoon. 37-year-old Ariel Ordinga King of Lynch's Tenantry, St. Philip, was not required to plead to assaulting 84-year-old Jasmine Hall on April the 28th when she appeared before Magistrate Christy Coffey Sargent in the District A Magistrate's Court at 1 p.m. However, her case was transferred to the District C Magistrate's Court, where it is due to be heard by Acting Chief Magistrate Christopher Birch on May the 23rd. The victim's daughter, Barbara Daniel Goddard, vented her frustration with the legal system, telling reporters she was not only upset about the long wait from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. for the matter to be heard, but also bitterly disappointed that the case was not actually resolved in one go. We told that it was going to be at St. Matthias, and we got there for 9 o'clock, only to stand for about an hour and then to be told by a member of the press that they were told it was at um, this location. So we got here and then we sat, then we sat for hours waiting, one o'clock, waiting till one o'clock for, um, you know, for the case to start, only to be told that now it's yeah. Bail 3000 and uh, we have to appear again on Monday. So yes, I am feeling a sense of utter frustration. I am feeling disappointed. Um, the anger which I thought had subsided is slowly rising to the surface. So at this moment, my desire for vengeance is actually increasing seriously. The latest International Monetary Fund report on the performance of the Barbados economy has received the thumbs up from one of the island's leading economic experts. The Global Financial Institution's report issued yesterday said the local economy appeared to have turned the corner with activity picking up. However, it warned that the country continued to face serious challenges. The report pointed out that even though growth had resumed and the short-term prospects were positive, imbalances persisted between available resources and government programs. It further warned that the island remained highly vulnerable and may not realize its potential without deep-seated reforms to
to align revenues and expenditures and reduce debt. In response, Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences at the Kayfield campus of the University of the West Indies, Dr. Justin Robinson, described the report as a positive one. The report provides further confirmation from the central bank report and earlier that the real economy is showing, is showing signs of picking up and returning to the normal growth level for Barbados of, say, between 2 and 3%. So the, the metrics for the real economy are, are generally quite positive with growth in real GDP, a 2% drop or so in, in the unemployment rate, low inflation. So, so, so those sort of, if you look at those three metrics, inflation, growth, employment, there has been some definite improvement in that. International business and financial services officials here are warning of a possible slowdown in new activities within that sector as a result of the Panama Papers scandal. Director of Seidel Bank and Trust Ben Arundel says the leak of millions of files from the Panama law firm and corporate service provider Mossack Forsenka had brought issues of security and confidentiality into focus. In sports now, Roger Federer has withdrawn from this year's French Open after failing to recover from a back injury. The 34-year-old did not play in the Madrid Open earlier this month after hurting his back during practice for the tournament. The world number three returned for the Italian Open but was beaten in the third round by Dominique Thiem. Federer said he had been making steady progress but it's still not 100%. There's regional and international news after this short break. Secure your future, be financially strong. Since 1983, we have been there for you. A smart range of products, great tax benefits. We have a solution to your hopes and your dreams. The Barbados Workers Union Cooperative Credit Union. The Barbados Workers Union Cooperative Credit Union. We're back with news from the region now. The Trinidad and Tobago National Security Minister is dodging any commitment to a time frame for a reduction in the murder rate. Reporters pressed Edmund Dillon during government's forum on campaign finance reform to pinpoint whether the PNM's anti-crime measures are making a dent in crime. Fourteen murders between last Friday and Monday. But even as he confronts the continued bloodshed, the National Security Minister insists government's anti-crime measures are producing results. They are working, they have Can been working. I, I will substantiate that by saying to you that one of the policies, one of the operational aspects of our policies is in fact the integrated approach, which we did in Sogrim Chase and Lavender, and that has worked. That has produced some results. He's referring to the joint police army patrols, which he says reduced crime in areas of central Trinidad and in Laventil. Minister Dillon hopes the recently passed SSA legislation will help collate intelligence from multiple agencies, making it easier for law enforcement to act on. On the international scene, San Francisco's police chief Greg Sir has stepped down hours after a police officer shot and killed a young black woman driving a suspected stolen car. The resignation was announced by Mayor Ed Lee, who had asked him to quit. Sir and city police had, in recent months, come under fierce criticism over fatal police shootings of several black suspects. Reports also recently emerged that a number of officers had exchanged racist text messages. And finally, a major investigation is underway after an Egypt air passenger jet disappeared over the Mediterranean Sea. Flight MS-804 was traveling from Paris to Cairo with 66 passengers and crew when it vanished early on Thursday.
U.S. officials telling CNN they are operating under a theory for now that this plane was taken down by a bomb. And in a gut-wrenching development for the relatives of those on board Egypt Air Flight 804, Egyptian authorities have now had to walk back on their initial reporting that wreckage from the plane had been found. As of this moment, no wreckage of the plane has been confirmed to have been located. The investigation now at a very early but critical stage. Tonight, a frantic search in the Mediterranean for signs of wreckage. The search and rescue teams are now uh, it's turning into a search and recovery. Egypt Air's vice chairman says all the maintenance checks for the plane were conducted properly. The Airbus A320 is a workhorse, considered one of the safest passenger planes in the skies. And this plane vanished during what's considered one of the safest portions of any flight, cruising altitude, about 37,000 feet. That's news and sport, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. Have a fantastic day.